The year is 1950, and two mysteries are marking the city of New York in the United States. The first is an extraordinary number of reports of unknown objects flying in the skies of the United States. And the second is a series of strange and inexplicable disappearances of the city's trash cans. Yes, in 1950, New York experienced a record number of metal trash can thefts. Cartoonist Alan Dunn thought of a possible solution to both mysteries at once, and he published his suggestion in the form of a comic strip in the New York Times. The solution to the UFO sightings and the disappearing trash cans was simple. UFOs were coming to Earth to steal trash cans. Alan Dunn's comic strip is a joke, but it would have a very unexpected consequence. It started the modern debate about life beyond Earth. The newspaper with Dunn's comic strip reached the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico where physicist Emil Konopinski showed the comic strip of the aliens stealing trash cans to his colleague Enrico Fermi during lunch. Fermi jokingly commented that Dunn's idea was an excellent scientific hypothesis because it explained two things at once. But the joke sparked a serious discussion on the potential for intelligent civilizations and interstellar travel. And like any good lunch conversation, the discussion evolved into more mundane topics, unrelated to astronomy or life beyond Earth. However, Fermi was somewhat out of this second part of the conversation. He was thinking silently until he interrupted the conversation with an exclamation which went down in history. Where is everybody? The other scientists soon realized that Fermi wasn't talking about the same things they were, but rather continuing the conversation about life beyond Earth. Fermi had done something he was very good at, complicated numerical estimates. This type of exercise became known as a Fermi estimate. The most famous Fermi estimate is the question, how many piano tuners are there in Chicago? Fermi used common sense and logical reasoning to deduce an approximate number, and he was very good at getting close to the correct answer. That's why this type of mental estimation was named after him. The question that Fermi had just estimated in his head was the following. How many intelligent civilizations exist in our galaxy? His conclusion was that there should be so many civilizations that we should have already seen someone. So the question that lingered was, where is everybody? This is the Fermi paradox. If Earth is an ordinary planet, then the universe must be full of life. But no matter where we look, we don't see any signs of life. It's as if the entire universe is simply just ours. So how can we reconcile these two important facts? The Fermi paradox is one of the main ways to discuss the possibility of life beyond Earth. It is interesting not because it lacks an answer, but because it has many answers. And each possible answer makes sense in a different universe. An especially interesting question that I want to address in this video is the following. Are we the very first or one of the first civilizations to exist in our galaxy? This answer seems unpleasant because it appears to place humanity in a special position in the history of the universe. But some civilization has to be the first. So, does it make sense that we are one of these? At first we don't know, but we can evaluate the possible scenarios. The universe is ancient, around 13.7 billion years old. But even though it is ancient, it will still last a long time, and stars like the Sun will continue to exist for tens of billions of years into the future. However, the Sun is on a list of stars that die early. There are other types of stars, such as red dwarfs, which will continue to exist for trillions of years. The point is that the universe has much more history ahead of it than it has had in the past. We are literally at the beginning of the universe. And depending on the conditions necessary for the emergence of intelligent life, we cannot rule out the real possibility that we are one of the first civilizations in our galaxy, if not in the entire universe. And, when I talk about possibility, I am referring to the statistical sense of the word. Depending on some variables that we will see shortly, it is likely that we are one of the first civilizations in the universe. So let's look at three possible scenarios. In the first scenario, the emergence of life is only possible in star systems similar to the Sun. This means that life only arises on rocky planets orbiting stars similar to the Sun. Furthermore, intelligent life takes a few billion years to emerge, as it did on Earth. But given the right conditions on the planet, it is likely that intelligent life will emerge at some point. All we need is enough time. This scenario is called the principle of mediocrity because it assumes that humanity is a perfectly average example of civilization. In other words, we are nothing special. We inhabit a common type of planet, orbiting a common type of star. We did not become who we are for any exceptional reason other than pure statistical probability, which by the way was in our favor. Even taking these conditions and this scenario into account, we are still relatively early in the history of the universe. Speaking statistically, the best time for intelligent life to exist in the universe is yet to come. And this will only happen in about 15 billion years, as the period when there will be the largest number of stars like the Sun in the Milky Way, our galaxy. 
In other words, most of the intelligent civilizations that the galaxy will have have not yet been born, and many of the planets that will one day host intelligent life probably haven't even formed yet. That said, we didn't arrive super early. If there are going to be a thousand intelligent civilizations in our galaxy in total, considering both the past and the future, there are already 250 intelligent civilizations in the galaxy, including us. 75% of the civilizations that will exist in the Milky Way haven't emerged. This is the first scenario, the principle of mediocrity. What differentiates it from the other two scenarios is that they do not agree that stars like the Sun are the most ideal type for life, and that makes sense. The Sun and all stars similar to it will only be able to support life for about 6 or 7 billion years in total. And that is practically half the age of the current universe just so you have an idea. It's very little in astronomical terms. There are stars that will last much, much longer than the Sun, such as orange dwarfs and red dwarfs. If life is possible around these longer-lived stars, the scenario changes significantly. The peak of habitability in the universe will only arrive in hundreds of billions of years, and we have arrived very early for the party of life in the universe. And when the universe is in its most populous period, with life appearing around almost every star, any trace of humanity that once existed near the beginning of the universe will have been erased forever. And there are two distinct cases that deserve to be explored here. First, if the evolution of intelligent life is relatively easy, even around stars like the Sun, we are one of the first civilizations in the galaxy. If there are going to be a thousand civilizations in our galaxy, we are the first. If there are going to be 10,000 civilizations, we are among the first 10. In other words, 99.9% .9 of the intelligent life that will exist in the universe hasn't even emerged yet. It is indeed a statistical loneliness. The second alternative is even more solitary. Perhaps life around stars like the Sun is the exception, and the emergence of intelligent life takes much longer than it did on Earth. Earth is the exception, not the rule. And the true habitat for intelligent life is red dwarfs, which remain habitable for longer. If that is the case, we are not only the first in the galaxy, but we are probably the first civilization in the entire universe. This does not mean that life in the universe is unlikely or uncommon. This means that life in the universe is currently unlikely. We had the misfortune of inhabiting the universe when it's still too young for life. In this scenario, it will take another trillion years for the universe to reach its peak habitability. We arrived too early for the party. In other words, it is unlikely, but not impossible, that we are the first civilization in the universe. Some intelligent civilization will need to be the first, and it might be us. And since the universe is still far from its period of greatest habitability, 99.9% .9 of the intelligent civilizations that will exist probably don't even have their planet formed yet. The first civilization or civilizations will surely look at the sky and be amazed by the silence observed in all directions. Many of them will have their own names for the Fermi Paradox, and who knows what solutions they will find to explain the loneliness. The Fermi Paradox is an open problem, and more and more questions and hypotheses are emerging that try to explain where everyone is. But what about you? Are you convinced by the idea that we are the first, or at least among the first in the universe? Otherwise, which solution to the Fermi Paradox do you like the most and would like to see in a video here on the channel? Write to me here in the comments. Thank you very much and see you next time.